There's a 95 kW boiler installed here. We load the firewood manually. Basically, it can burn anything. As soon as we reach a temperature of 75, the turbine shuts off. Our smaller greenhouse accumulates less excess moisture. An expansion tank is a must. The temperature rises quite quickly. It's better when it's higher. It won't overheat as much. For winter, it's better when it's lower. As soon as the temperature drops by 3 from the set point, the fans turn on again. The most costly thing in winter is heating and lighting. Well, around 55. About 30 kW of thermal energy is needed to maintain the temperature in the greenhouse. The temperature just dropped by half a degree. Today we're going to talk about greenhouse heating. We're currently in one of our greenhouses and there's an anteroom here that serves as a boiler room. In the anteroom, we've installed a boiler and all the necessary equipment for the greenhouse to operate. We'll now explain a bit about it all. We have a 95 kW boiler that can operate in an automatic force draft mode, maintaining the temperature. However, the boiler is manually operated, meaning we load the firewood ourselves. Since our turbine is currently running to open the boiler properly and prevent smoke, we need to turn off the turbine for now. Here, we can directly load firewood as needed. Basically, it can burn anything that can burn. It's a water heating boiler with a water circuit that heats up. We can adjust the water heating temperature using a controller. The current maximum temperature setting is 75 degrees Celsius. Once the boiler reaches 75 degrees, the turbine shuts off. Every three minutes, it turns on briefly to provide a slight draft and prevent the boiler from going out. This allows us to maintain a specific temperature. In this case, it's 70-75 degrees Celsius. The boiler is connected to a buffer tank, also known as a heat accumulator. But what is its purpose? To operate in standard mode and not have to be here constantly, especially at night, we have a buffer tank. It has a capacity of 3 cubic meters and can store heat energy from 40 to 80 degrees Celsius, which is about 120 kW. The boiler is connected to the buffer, which pumps in hot water. It passes through and then exits, and from the buffer tank, it goes to the heating system. Then we have an expansion tank, which is essential. Why? Because when we heat water, it expands, and we need somewhere to put this excess water. That's what the expansion tank is for. It also serves as a water supply for both replenishment and watering. Next, we have a manifold from the buffer tank, which is a distribution manifold. From it, we have pumps to supply the heat carrier directly to the heating elements. Let's go inside the greenhouse. What do we see? Inside, the system is based on fan heaters and radiators. The greenhouse is divided into sections, and each section has its own fan heater. How does the system work? We have pipes leading to the fan heaters, and water is supplied. Accordingly, when the temperature drops, they are connected to a thermostat. The temperature in the greenhouse is 21 degrees Celsius. We can check with another sensor, which shows around 1921 degrees. On the thermostat, we set the temperature to which we want to heat our system, for example, up to 21 degrees, and then the heating system turns off. As soon as the temperature drops by 3 degrees from the set point, the fan heaters turn on again, and taking heat from the radiators that are in the vents, heat begins to be transferred to the greenhouse, heating it. This is how the heating in the greenhouse works. By the way, you can see how the temperature gradually drops to 29 degrees, while it's 5-6 degrees outside, so the temperature gradually decreases. The fan heaters have reached the temperature and turned off, the temperature dropped slightly, and they turned on again, reaching the temperature, and so it works. There are dead zones that the fan heaters cannot reach, so we install radiators or batteries there. Right now, we'll go and heat this part because it's quite cold. So our radiators, with a temperature of about 55 degrees, will heat it. What's the advantage of these fan heaters and why are they installed so high? The upper part has warmer air, 
and to return this air to the system, there's a grate that directs this air down so that we can capture this system. Let's go and manually turn on the fan heaters now, and show how it all works. While we were walking around, the temperature dropped by half a degree. It's probably because the anteroom is still open, and it's also taking away heat. There's a manual mode where we can turn on the fan heaters, and we turn them on a little bit. They're heating the greenhouse, but they generally work for about 5-10 minutes and then turn off for about 10-15 minutes, but again, it depends on the temperature. What's the nuance? The greater the temperature difference between outside and inside, the more heat we naturally lose. For example, for a 1C difference between the inside and outside, we need to spend 2KW to maintain that temperature for this greenhouse. If it's plus 5 or plus 6C outside and plus 20C in the greenhouse, that's a 12C difference, which means we need to spend around 30KW of thermal energy per hour for additional heating to maintain that temperature in the greenhouse. Naturally, this figure is lower during the day. Why? Because there's solar energy, and even on cloudy days, the greenhouse itself heats up, and in principle, this figure can be divided by 2 or 3 because even without additional heating, it's about 15-16 degrees here, which means solar radiation gives us an additional 10 degrees. By the way, the temperature is already 20.4 degrees now, while we were walking around. So the temperature is rising, and it's rising quite quickly. Now I'll turn off the forced air. For now, while the greenhouse is in test mode, we can walk around, play, and practice starting and adjusting all these systems so that they work more efficiently. There's a shelving system for growing plants here. So we'll grow microgreens, salads, and other things here. What's the advantage of the shelving system? We can get more usable space in a smaller area. This greenhouse is about 280 square meters, 10 by 28 meters, but thanks to the shelves, the usable area has increased to 530 square meters. With a smaller area, we need less heat to heat the greenhouse. We have a 95 kW boiler installed here, but if we took the entire 530 square meters of the greenhouse, we would need a 150 kW boiler, almost twice as much heat to heat this greenhouse. Therefore, due to the compactness and the creation of a shelving system for growing, but this is only suitable for salads, greens, and microgreens grown on shelves, we can save on heating due to a smaller heating volume. An additional fact for heat retention is that there are also heat accumulators here. What's their nuance? They work in the following mode, as soon as the temperature rises above 25 C, which can happen when the sun comes out and starts to heat things up, raising the temperature here, these fans turn on and start to drive this hot air into the ground, thus accumulating this heat in the earth. In this way, we can accumulate the excess heat we have during the day to partially use it at night. At night, the opposite process can occur. What happens? For example, the automation is set up so that if the temperature drops below 17-18 degrees, the fans turn on and drive cooler air through the ground. If we have accumulated heat in the ground, for example, 23-24 degrees, then we will heat the air by an additional 1-2 degrees by passing all this through. What's also good is that at night we create air movement, and we have less humidity. As you can see, our greenhouse is actually quite dry. But due to the temperature difference, it's warm in the greenhouse and cold outside, so dew forms on the walls. There are always droplets there, and due to air movement caused by the fans and heat accumulators, we reduce the humidity in the greenhouse and prevent droplets from accumulating on the dome, which can then fall onto the plants. This is how this heating system is built. We have fan heaters, a boiler, a buffer tank, and automation that controls it all. We'll also install a thermostat that will work via Wi-Fi, so you can view, adjust, and start it at any time. These are the main aspects we consider when creating greenhouse heating. We calculate the power that needs to be allocated for heating, for example, here, the power is 95 kW for the greenhouse to operate normally. The boiler is rated for this power. The buffer tank is designed so that in the average season, during the main period of greenhouse operation, which is around 6 degrees for the Kiev region, this buffer tank is sufficient. When loading it for the night, we loaded 5-6 hours of firewood, heated the buffer tank to a temperature of 75-80 degrees, 
and the boiler plus buffer tank with this capacity was enough for the night without additional loading. Well, then, fan heaters, radiators, batteries, heat accumulation, and ground heating are all calculated separately to ensure that the entire area is heated evenly without any cold spots. Heating in winter is one of the most costly elements. Two of the most expensive factors in winter are heating and lighting. If we want to grow naturally and get a harvest in February or March, we need both additional lighting and heating. These two factors consume the maximum budget for growing. To minimize all this, it is necessary to make greenhouses more compact so that they lose as little heat as possible. For summer greenhouses, it's better when they are higher so they don't overheat. For winter greenhouses, it's better when they are lower, as they don't need as much heating. Such facilities are designed to start your own business on a small plot. This is basically a typical suburban area where you used to have a garden, and now you have a greenhouse. The goal is to get the maximum profit from the products. That's why such greenhouses are built. If you found this interesting, subscribe to our channel. If you are interested in our greenhouses and the equipment we install, visit our website teplitka.kiev.ua. We do everything turnkey. It was Alexander with you from the company Ecotuplika. Live in harmony with nature and in the rhythm of progress. Until next time.